right, everybody. This is D with a brand new interview podcast. I have just watched this film called The Woman. It's a story about a young man and his uh his struggling to belong. But you know what? Instead of me trying to describe this film, I do have the director herself, Rose Creator, here to talk about the film. Rose, thank you for being on the show. Thank you so much. This is very exciting. <laughs> it is exciting. Uh I watched your film, The Woman, and when I watched the trailer. I was very thrown off about like what the movie was about because they didn't have the title in the trailer. So if you want to give us a synopsis about this film, by all means, I'm here for it. Yeah, so the movie is a drama feature. It's my first movie. Uh, I did a full-blown feature for my first film. And it's about a college student who, like you said, doesn't kind of feel like he belongs anywhere. So he's going through his days and um, meets up with his mom and finds out that he was actually kidnapped at eight months old. And his whole life from there on out is trying to find who he is, who his parents are, or who they were, right. and people that are his blood. So he makes a point to try to find out who he is because he's kind of a lost college student. Yeah. And like you see that, but the lost college student in this film, like there is um some some would probably say like you know a continuous theme of seeing the the main character Noah and doing his day in and day out. We talked about this like before the show, but uh, there, there's a reason you see his uh, repetitive of of his story because uh, as you watch the story, you see his attachment like to to things and people aren't as tangible as like as you would say most people's are. And like uh, you wrote this story. And mm -hmm. this is like one of the first stories that you've also directed. Was that was that challenging, like to write the story and also have like that same direction inside of it? So right out of high school, I took an English writing class, and I aced it. I think I got like a hundred nine percent in the class. So I knew out of high school that I was either going to write a book or a screenplay. Of course, at the time, I've been out for years, so at the time, I didn't know I was going to go down this path, but I knew I loved writing. And so when directing kind of fell into my plate a year ago, I knew that I wanted to write my first story. And this movie in particular actually came to me in a dream. So I thought that was really unique. And I woke up in the middle of the night, wrote it in my journal, and within the next two weeks, basically wrote a screenplay. And I had it edited by a friend who has books out on Amazon um, but I wrote the story from beginning to end and directed it and produced it too so it was really a really cool first time experience I wouldn't change that for anything no I get that I get that completely and like you can see the passion in some of the some of the lines of the story like the interaction with uh certain people in Noah's life uh not to give away spoilers but you, you see a lot of heart towards the end of the film also when like there's a couple more reveals that happen. So I can definitely tell you put a lot of time and effort into this. Mm -hmm. Um if I if I can sway away from the story for one second and talk about the shots. There's so many aerial shots and so many like full blown like uh shots of buildings and like you get to see like the world that Noah lives in. Was mm -hmm. that was that hard to do or was that something new for you? So I had never done editing, cinematography, drone. I had never really seen a drone operate in person before. So that was all new. The whole experience was entirely new for me, but I did know the direction I wanted it to go. So I picked the locations in particular because of the landscape. Gotcha. And I knew how unique Seattle and our school, especially University of Washington is. So I knew where I wanted the drone shots. You know, I meditated and dreamt about it for a few weeks. So when we got to the location, I was like, this is exactly what I want it to look like. You know, people in 35 countries have seen this. It's been played over 10,000 times. So I really wanted to educate people on what Seattle looked like. And so that's how I chose the locations. You definitely did it. You got it. Like it was, it was beautiful to see those shots. Like it felt like a, like a cool montage whenever like the scene was cutting out and like, it was nice to see that, that break of the city. And it really, mm -hmm. it really felt calming. Oh, thank you. Yeah. The cinematographer was awesome too. And it was his first film. So it was, it was 
kind of a practice run for everyone but it's also my favorite movie i've done so far <laughs> i bet i bet it is speaking of other movies you've done so far uh you've, you've done a few shorts already mm -hmm. and they all have different tones different kind of feels to them like what what stands out with this one as opposed to the other films that you've done the woman what stands out um it's a feature and i wrote it all from beginning to end versus my short that I created a production company for Rose Credit Productions with the intention that screenplay writers would come to me with their ideas. Gotcha. And I really wanted to broadcast, hey, I'm a director and I'd love to produce your your ideas. And so within a month after The Woman came out, A Room by the Road was approached to me by a local screenplay writer here in Seattle and I produced and directed his movie in May last year. And what's different from that is not only is it a short, but it's a crime thriller. So completely different than a drama. Um, but I did, however, put a, my own twist on it at the very end. So I was able to kind of change up some things and mm. make it a little more suspenseful in my mind. And I think it paid off. A lot of people was like, wow, what a cliffhanger at the end. So I thought it was cool. And um the woman, you know, it kind of ends with your own perspective right. going into it at the end. And that's what I like because I felt like it was the appropriate time to end it. And it's more of a heartfelt film and a feature versus like a short that's like jam packed with crime. Yeah, def most definitely there. We uh, we talked last time you were on a show about uh, shooting at night. You feel like you had trouble shooting at night. And the first four minutes was primarily at night. And honestly, like, I feel like, like that was the biggest, the biggest draw for the film for me was like the the very first four minutes. And it's a nice scene. Something you said you had trouble with. Like, how did you think you did when it came to that scene? I, it was exactly how I wanted it. Like vision wise, it looked exactly how I wanted it. Cool. Um, it was also the hardest scene in my entire life I have ever filmed. Probably my like worst time outside ever in my life it was freezing cold it had just snowed Oof. you can't see any snow on the ground but it was ice um it was probably like around 20 degrees no matter how many layers we wore we were still cold to the bone we had a baby that was crying yeah <laughs> it was it was just a lot um and that was the first scene we actually filmed so it was kind of like a shock Wow. Um, but I wanted to set the tone and I I gave everyone Starbucks. So I knew that it was trying to make the situation better, but it was hard. Like it it was hard, but it was worth it in the end because I felt like it captivated the audience. You know, you you walk into the movie, it's daytime, they're going to their campsite, and then stuff happens and now it's nighttime, right? Yeah. So I really wanted to show like a day's worth of work, even though we filmed it in like two hours. It was a good opening. It definitely was. Like it was a good opening and origin story to like the character Noah. So like you did you did both of those things at the same time. So kudos. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and and speaking speaking of Noah, like let's talk about the actors for a bit. Like how did you uh, how did you find your actors? Like and which one really really uh like captured the characters for you? Mm, yeah. So I do it kind of an unorthodox way. I don't do regular auditions. Okay. I feel like that's really intimidating. You know, me coming from a background as an actor first, I know how intimidating that might be, how confusing it might be because you don't know a lot about the person you're talking to or the character yet. So what I like to do is have a quick call and let someone know that I'm interested in them. These people in particular were already my friends and we were connected on Facebook already. So what I did is I just went through my Facebook friends of 5,000 people and was like what kind of person has a face that would emulate Georgia or Noah or Niall and a few people you know approached me and I did give them roles within it because they're my friends and I was like I'm gonna give you an opportunity so I wrote in characters for them right on. but the main three characters I knew exactly who I wanted and so I have a quick you know Facebook conversation with them and then um, we have another kind of more formal one where I'm talking about the characters seeing if they can relate to them in some fashion and every single character that was in my film could relate to their character in some way in real life so that's how I kind of decide who I'm going with that's nice so you really 
sounds like you really like wrote a lot of these roles for your friends, even though you didn't write these roles for your friend. That's good. Exactly. Yeah. That's right on. <laughs> so uh the movie's an hour long. It's on YouTube. Anyone can go out there and check it out. Are you uh are you nervous about the the outcome or the or the reviews that most people may give you? You know, I've gotten a couple of reviews on IMDb. Okay. But most of them, uh, so a couple of negative reviews, I should say, but most of them are positive. And everyone that came to the premiere, it was a sold up premiere of a hundred people. There wasn't anything negative except, hey, I really wish there was like more. And yeah. but you know, I left it to everyone's interpretation of how he, he would go on with his life. So, you know, you can't please everybody. No. Um, it did make me nervous at first. It's been out for almost a year, March 13th last year, and I'm proud of it. And that's how it is. But it's also on 2B TV. And that's kind of the, the large one that it's on. It's on eight other platforms, kind of lower end platforms, but still available. But 2B is doing so, so well. Yeah. I'm just so thrilled. It's been played many many times each day and i have a track record of where it's being played and and everything like that so it's it's just really cool to think that literally a year ago from now we were filming it and i didn't even know how big it was going to be and i feel like it's been seen by so many people here that support other filmmakers and people in like kenya and i'm like what wow. <laughs> it's crazy you really got so, out there. my goodness yeah <laughs> I, I do agree with like with that with that one negative comment you talked about how I wanted more like I did want some more because seeing seeing the reveal at the end kind of left me wanting to see like okay so where is this gonna go now because like it was just it was a lot inside of it has like some mystery inside of it like like a little bit of supernatural if you want to go that route inside of it as well like maybe more spiritual if anything mm -hmm. else mm -hmm. and uh, it really hits. And on a lot of different layers, like like to like the DNA layer, to like the, the family layer, and like in just being a wall in the world. So it was a lot to take away from the story. It was uh mm -hmm. it was very well written, very well shot. Uh I'm really excited to see what you do next. And Thank you. <laughs> whatever whatever you do have next, make sure you come back and let us know. You said you got two more projects coming out this year. Yeah, I'm hoping actually for three. So we're filming on February 18th, my first short that I've written from beginning to end um this came while I was relaxing one day and I was like this plot would be amazing no one's ever done this and <laughs> once again everyone that I've um brought on for the project they connect with the character in some fashion right so on. it's just another perfect film in my mind it's called wish you well okay. and it's about three college best friends who are able to disprove the old folk tale that a coin heads up is always lucky and that a tails is never lucky right so if we see like a penny or a quarter if it's a tails like i've grown up to never pick it up yeah because it's supposed to be unlucky so we're disproving that in the film like and that. through this journey together um, these friends grow closer because um they're much older and they've just kind of stuck it out as best friends through college and they find the important meeting in life which is to be grateful for what you have in life and wish well on others so that's what this movie is about. And then my two other films that are in pre-production, one is a crime thriller and it's a feature film and it's actually an Amazon book series. So I'm really excited to be partnering with that my author. For you this are film. Like all over the place. I like it. Right. <laughs> and then um, the, I feel like one of the first ever documentaries that is going to hit television coming out of Seattle, I'm producing, directing, and uh, we're in pre-production right now. And that's going to be my version, unbiased, how the news has suppressed the safety of firearms and how firearms do save lives. Because the news likes to broadcast negativity. Right. And they don't actually put a spotlight on those who, in my mind, are heroes that have saved their lives, a stranger's lives, their family's lives. So we're actually talking with real people that have saved lives in some fashion and so we're trying to give them a spotlight and encourage them to get their story out so that's, that's interesting that's it's, in pre-production and we're actually going to be flying across the country and meeting with the people this year definitely got to come back and talk about that one because uh even members of the nra believe that there should be more regulations on guns but so yeah, <laughs> i'm pretty sure you're gonna be touching on that as well so that's 
that's definitely going to be a lot a very interesting conversation to hear but you're gonna get mm-hmm. a lot of heads turning with that one i hope it hits netflix to be honest i know oh. that they really don't like to broadcast positivity and firearms but we're v- going to be very unbiased we're bringing in facts um statistics we're bringing in the history of firearms and we're talking with heroes so uh-huh. i'm really excited about it well that's interesting rose has been a very good time i i can't tell you how much fun i had doing this i know you you are a busy person you got a lot more stuff to do today but i want to say thank you so much for doing this and being on the show with me Thank you so much. I can't wait for the next one. <laughs> Neither can I. I. I'll put all the, the links and notes inside the bottom of the podcast and like the, the YouTube video you guys would be watching. But is there anyone you want people to check you out before we go? Uh, Facebook is Rose Kreider. Instagram is at Rose Kreider. And you feel free to message me and ask about my films or talk about my films, what you like and dislike. Um, there's also IMDb links for The Woman and A Room by the Road. But stay tuned on my social media pages because I'll be announcing more films coming up awesome can't wait all right guys thank you so much until next time you guys take it easy